Kim Yuna does not regain the title. You can hear the audience, they're not happy with those scores. Were they robbed? Was it rigged? Those are the kinds of questions a lot of people were asking today. People don't want to watch a sport where you see people fall down and somehow score above someone who goes Big snowstorm in Salt Lake City last night. The visibility down to zero. And maybe that's why the figure skating judges couldn't see anything. For the judging controversy surrounding the pairs competition. Here at the Olympics though, the pressure is coming from IOC President Jacques Wolf. Corruption and rigged results always put figure skating in the line. The 2002 Olympic made headlines around the world and blew the judging scandal up to the roof. The story was fictionalized in the first book of the figure skating mystery novel series, Murder on Ice. In the book, the judge who was accused of fixing the votes and gave the gold medal in the ladies' event to Russia over America is murdered. Who did it? And why? What really goes on behind the scenes of an international figure skating competition? Alina Adams, who has worked as a figure skating researcher, writer and producer for ABC, NBC, TNT and ESPN spills all the secrets behind the glitz and the glamour in this fictionalized series of figure skating mystery novels. The book is full of juicy and never before revealed secrets for figure skating fans. You can get the ebook at just $9.99 from Amazon using the link in our descriptions below. We also got in touch with the author of the book. Alina, who had agreed to sponsor this video and shared some insights about figure skating competitions. The 2002 games changed figure skating judging forever. So, what are some of the scandals or incidents in the past which contributed to the scoring system we have today? Let's take a look. Hello and welcome back to my channel. Before we jump into the video, make sure that you go down and subscribe to my channel. That way you are always the first to know whenever I upload a video and so you don't miss one. Figure skating. Top 10 scandals which change figure skating scoring forever. To watch. Number 10. In the 1976 Winter Olympics, Terry Kubica performed a jaw dropping move on ice the backflip. Okay, now, here's the backflip for the first time. Watch him swing it up, pull him up, self up, and over, and land. Almost fell out of it, but got it done. And he won the crowd, but lost the competition. Okay, here's the mark. Bob Kennedy is giving her a low mark. The rest of the judges are fairly lower than the first mark. Than the hear first the crowd mark, booing at the judges. And that would be the first and only legal backflip performed in the figure skating history because, shortly after that, backflip was banned. Skaters will get two points deduction if they do that. So, in case you are drawn to figure skating because you chanced upon the super cool backflip videos on TikTok, nope, you won't be seeing it in the Olympic Games. But you might see it in the exhibition after the competitions, as the reigning world champion, Nathan Chan and Canadian champion, Keegan Messing have both got this move in their bags. The official reason for the backflip ban was because the landing is made on two feet instead of one. But this lame excuse was debunked when Surya Benali from France did a backflip and landed on one foot in the 1998 Olympic Winter Games. Backflip, totally illegal in competition. You might as well land on one foot, because they get mad when you land things on two feet. So strong to be able to do that. And she finishes her program with her back to the judges. Uh oh, the reaction from this judging panel will be really interesting. Where are the marks? Did she get nailed? Absolutely. Yep, she took the bullet from the judges. Back to the judges. But the crowd and press loved it. And she became a legend overnight. And I'm looking for a backflip tonight. I don't know about you. Soria Bonali. Number nine. Opening there with a perfect triple toe loop. Straight into another one. Even though you won't see skaters flipping backward, you will definitely see skaters flipping sideways in the air. In fact, so much so that you will lose count these days. The jumps might look the same to you in the air, but not all of them are made equal, or they will be penalized for Ziyaking. So what's a Ziyak? In the 1982 World Championships, Elaine Ziyak won the World Champion title by performing as many as six triple jumps. Just for reference, the average number of triple jumps performed by women skaters is still six in the last World Championships, so she's way ahead of her time. That performance has set the flags flying. But out of six triples, she did four triple toe loop which caused some outrage. Triple toe loop combination. Then ISU enacted a new rule forbidding skaters to perform the same jump more than twice. 
the fans dubbed it the Zayak rule. Yep, we now know ISU doesn't like people taking advantage of the loophole. The next one. They exploited it big time and became legend overnight. Which brings us into... Number 8. 1984 Sarajevo Games. The world was mesmerized by the ice dancing couple Torvald Dean's Bolero. But little did the public know about the controversy surrounding this routine. Firstly, the music cut was 18 seconds longer than what was allowed. Then the couple reviewed the ISU rule book and found that the actual timing count begins only when the skaters started skating. So they made use of this loophole, knelt down at the beginning of their routine, timed the performance so that when Torval first placed a blade on the ice, it's after 18 seconds. <laughs> ISU had now amended their rules to redefine the starting time as when you begin to move or skate. And, no lying on the ice. Their reasoning? If your blades did not touch the ice, you are not skating. You know, I was watching the Winter Olympics, and uh, if you performed that routine now, you wouldn't get the gold. No, uh, simply because of all the rule changes, the requirements of everything that you need to do now, um, that routine wouldn't get any marks. Really? No. Well, ISU can stop skaters from exploiting their loophole, but they definitely can't stop skaters from wanting to recreate the Bolero legend on ice. Notice Camilla Valiva, one of the biggest star to watch in the Olympic this year, is wearing pants instead of skirts. This costume was not allowed in the past, which brings us into... Number 7 There was one scandalous moment at the 1988 Winter Olympics that changed the figure skating costume forever. Katarina Wick from East Germany adorned her waist with feathers instead of a skirt. This skirtless showgirl-themed program was considered too theatrical and sexy. Republic, Republic. Katarina This costume all fits together. It's the quintessential showgirl number. Now watch this next move. These are the footwork. And that led to a new ISU rule which required female skaters to wear the skirts which cover the buttocks. It was later extended to include pants for that gender equality, but no feather. The rule is dubbed the Katarina rule by the spectators. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Yeah. However, the word modest is different from culture to culture. When Zara Lari, the first Arabic skater competed in the ISU competitions, she would get a deduction point for wearing a hijab. Hijab is an essential clothing in the Arab world but unknown to the European-centric judging panel. Meet Zara Lari, an activist and hijabi athlete who brings figure skating to the Arab world. It was in 2012. It was like the first time ever someone comes out from this sport wearing a hijab. So they just really did not know how to judge it. So. They just gave the deductions, but immediately afterwards they wanted to do something in order to change that. So ASU wants no drama on ice, but they definitely couldn't stop drama off the ice. Which brings us to... Number 6 1994 is a year full of drama for figure skating, both on and off the ice. There was first the knee-whacking incident in the US figure skating scene pre-Olympics. <laughs> Then another drama happened during the World Championships that very same year. Where is the European champion? All the cameras crowding around and uh, a late arrival and here she comes. Reluctantly, she arrives. Well, Bonnelly has chosen not to stand on the podium. She came to Japan in 1994 after the Olympic Games and finished second to Yuka Sato. Obviously not happy at all with how it sorted out. And we feel for Surya, but that is not the way to behave and to react. I'm sorry, I think the result was right. Uh, Surya skated well, but uh, Sato, he skated better. Oh, this is a first for me, that's for sure. Just heartbroken. Oh, and she takes off the medal. Yep, that's something we don't see in today's podium often. Thank God. I mean... Look at today's skaters. At what she thought was unfair judging by that panel. Why did you not accept the medal? What was the problem? Because it's not my place and I'm just disappointed. Did you deserve the gold medal, Surya? Just myself. If nobody thinks it's not, I'm not first, I, don't, I think it's not good. Surya Benali later admitted it was unsportsmanship for her action. She lost out to Yuka Sato after a 5-4 tiebreaker decision. 
two main clans among the judges always stand out in the skating competition that time, the Anglo-Saxons and the Eastern Bloc. American judges always look for a graceful skater who meets the beauty standards, while European judges favor athletics and creativity, which benefits Benali. Block voting has been an issue that long plagued figure skating. ISU refused to address this issue despite all the criticism. Until when the biggest scandal broke out eight years later. Which brings us into number five. Now we have arrived in 2002. The day figure skating judging would be changed forever. The Canadians finished their long program clean and thought they had the gold medal in the bag. But it was the Russians who won the event, despite not having a clean skate. And the game fixing conspiracy was spelled out instantaneously. Unbelievable! This is robbed! Were they robbed? Was it rigged? Those are the kinds of questions a lot of people were asking today. Those accusations of a fix started almost moments after the marks came in. Skating your best program and coming second is hard to take. <laughs> It was a 5-4 split that night, as close as it gets on the panel. The vote mostly broke down along former party lines, with former Eastern Bloc judges picking the Russians, the Western judges choosing the Canadians. There's a lot of rumors going around right now that some judges gave them up so they would get some help in the other events, and, and that's what's so bad about this sport. This woman, a skating union official, now claims she was approached by the French judge, Marie Ren Lagoon, with an admission that she had in fact been pressured to vote for the Russians. The um, French judge broke down into tears and, and saying, you don't understand what pressure I'm under. But it was not her own opinion. I think it has to be taken serious, yes. Those charges and all of that public anger has pushed the International Skating Union to do something extremely unusual. After the Russians, Berezhnaya and Sigrid Lidza originally won the event. David Pelche and Jamie Sale will get a gold medal for f pairs figure skating. Well, after the competition, the French judge initially claimed that her own federation pressured her to cast her vote for the Russian pair. But recently, she held a press conference and changed her story. She now claims she voted her conscience, but was later approached by Canadian supporters, who intimidated her into making up her original story. And the case has prompted many people to propose reforms to the judging system that his new scoring system would reduce the potential for cheating. His system would create a degree of difficulty for each skater's program, similar to systems used in diving and gymnastics. The goal of this new system is to uh, make every element accountable for. But to prevent anyone from knowing which seven were voting, individual marks would no longer be displayed. A lump sum score would appear on the scoreboard. Judges could vote without anyone in the building knowing how they had voted. This would protect, prevent considerably possible block judging. How does this help you? It seems to me that it's important to say who is the judge and what did they vote and how did they vote? Openness is the issue, not hiding everything. So the new ISU judging system replaced the previous 6.0 system in 2004, with anonymous judging being approved. Looking back in hindsight, Dick Button, the two-time Olympic gold medalist, did have the foresight in seeing how the next scandal would play out. Which brings us to... Number 4 149.95 So, uh, Kim Yuna does not regain the title. Non ci credo dietro! No. Non ci credo! Non ci credo! Eh, il problema è vincere le donne, quindi se non ce la fa con l'Ipnisca, io ce la fa con tutto. Tu non fai che di gold medaglie anche per te, quindi non ci credo che non ci credo. Opponents can't honestly say I agree with that. At the 2014 Sochi Olympics, Russian figure skater Adelina Sotnikova fumbled a complicated jump during her routine. South Korean skater Yuna Kim seemed sure to win. But it was Sotnikova who received the highest score and took home the gold. The exact same scandal played out again in the 2014 Winter Olympics when Russia's Adelina Sotnikova took a shocking gold in the women's event. Sotnikova came into the event pretty much unknown to the public as she finished in ninth place in the previous World Championships, bottom second in the Grand Prix Final, and number two in the European Championships. She wasn't even selected to represent Russia in the team competition. However, she suddenly rose up to be the Olympic champion because... After she left the ice, Sotnikova hugged one of the nine judges, a fellow Russian married to a leader of Russia's figure skating federation one of two Russian officials involved in her scoring. If you look into the score sheets, you can easily detect cheating there. 
one judge straight out gave Satakova plus three grade of executions for all the elements without visible mistakes, and the maximum program component score they can give when the skater had a visible mistake. And they gave minimum bonus score to Yuna Kim. And not just that one judge. There was definitely a block voting fix conspiracy there. Something I only managed to understand after reading Alina Adams' novel there. Again, read it if you haven't. Unlike some sports, figure skating's international governing body lets national federations choose the judges they send to the Olympics and allows these judges to score skaters from their own countries. I think as long as the federations or the countries are hiring or firing the judges, then the judges are going to do right by the country first. So the judges are under an enormous amount of pressure from their federations. I think the number one thing that the ISU has to do is they have to separate the judges from the federations. Two million people have since signed a petition demanding an inquiry, but ISU is able to dismiss everything exactly because of the anonymous judging. If you read Alina Adams' book mentioned earlier, you would realize how the 2002 game fixing came to light was because it was easy to identify who gave each score that time. But under that anonymous voting system, it's impossible. If there is any positive rule change that comes out from this scandal, it's that it pushes ISU to abolish the anonymous judging. The judges' names would now be revealed together with the scores they give for accountability. Scandals always push the TV rating higher, in the same Olympics in 2014. The men's event seemed a little less exciting for the TV commentators. In fact, the media described it as a bobble fest. Which brings us into... Number 3 Yep, that was the first time user Rohanyu won the gold in the Olympics. He didn't have a clean skate. If you consume English media at that time, you would see they were full of criticism rather than celebration. Declaring figure skating has turned into a cold-blooded circus act and lost its grace. The issue was made worse eight months later, when Han Yu and Yan Han had a crash on ice but insisted on competing. Yeah, still feel the impact. Warm up for Grand Prix. Yuzuru Han Yu fell five times during that free skate. It is so hard to watch. And and some of the authorities. Uh, were criticized for allowing him to go on and skate. Anyway, Hanyu, who insisted on going for his quads and all the difficult jumps, took five falls in his program. That's probably the most falls one skater had done in one program. But he still won the silver in the event, drawing even more criticism. Well done, Yazuru Hanyu. Again, the issue of skaters falling but winning raised red flags for ISU. So, they started implementing new rules which penalize falls even further since season 2016. And look at the deductions. Four. For you fall, it's a mandatory one-point well, deduction. there's a new rule this year. For the first two falls, you get a mandatory one-point deduction. For the third and fourth fall, you then get a two-point deduction. And I mean, if you go to the five falls, <laughs> then you get three. You're out. They ban you. No. On you. Being a super competitive skater, was playing around the ruling cup of China 2014 by going for high value jumps despite his body condition, knowing very well that he would get the full credits as long as he completed the rotations in the air, even with the fall. So he won the silver there. But with the new rules implemented, skaters would think twice before playing around this strategy. Next up, we will introduce another icon in the figure skating world known for playing around the rule to maximize the score. Which brings us to number two. In women's ice skating, two Russian teenage girls topped the podium after breaking two world records one after another within 15 minutes. The 2018 Olympics ladies event was a showdown between Alina Zagatova and Evgenia Medvedeva. But the real winner from this game is their coach, Ateri Tutberidze. For many figure skating spectators, it's hard not to have heard of this name in recent years. Her students would often top the podium, one replacing another, to the point some fans started calling it the Atari bonus. How does Atari bonus work? She would study all the judging rules and explore the loophole to maximize the scores. Medvedeva was trained to place all her jumps into the second half of her short program because there is a 10% bonus for doing jumps late in the program. Then, Alina Zagatova, two years Medvedeva's junior, was trained to place all jumps into the second half of both short and long program. After Alina won the Olympics, 
she was under some criticism for exploring this loophole. You said you don't notice the media attention, but we have to ask you about the American skater Ashley Wagner, who criticized your routine, saying that putting all the very complicated elements at the end is basically cheating. What would you say to her? I can say that this only encouraged me to do more and better. I wanted to prove even more that what she was saying is not true, but you cannot prove anything to people like her. I say let her compete in the Olympics with my program, and I'll gladly see how she'll manage to do it. Yep, it's a drama time the media loved. Anyway, since then, ISU has enacted a new rule. Only one jump in the short and three jumps in the long program would get a 10% bonus at the second half to avoid skaters backloading their program. This rule, dubbed the Zegatova rule by the spectators, is not the only new rule set by ISU since the 2018 games. What else? Let's go to the... Number 1 Quads have been under fire since the early days for bringing down artistry. You're seeing a lot more skaters now try all these quads and the program becomes messy because maybe they're not so consistent on it, but they're hoping that because it's a good base value that they can up their technical score and then their artistic score starts to, to lag behind. In the 2018 Olympics, all the top six men scored significantly higher technical scores than their artistry impression mark. With the women skaters joining into the quad frenzy, there's multiple pushback from different stakeholders worrying the skating competition will become the jumping contest. In order to slow down the trend, ISU decreased the base value of quadruple jumps and triple axles, but increased the range of grade of execution scores from plus 3 to plus 5. Indirectly, this new rule change is giving judges even bigger power to influence the overall scores of the skaters. Some fans started calling this out as a new paradise for judges to fix the winners. 79.36, that'll put Tiffany and Jonathan currently into third place. You can hear the audience, they're not happy with those scores. Yes, this just happened in the Russian Nationals last week when the judges manipulated their power to place a Terry's daughter higher than her competitors. Yeah, wow. Despite having a weaker performance, <laughs> a lot has happened since then. For instance, Fans notice that Yuzuru Hanyu, the two-time Olympic champion who used to get the full bonus of plus 3 GOE across the board for his triple axel, are not getting the full credit of plus 5 GOE anymore. I mean, look at these perfect triple axles. Tell me who can do this any better? But that triple axel makes it look so easy. Look at these moves coming into the triple axel. You wouldn't even know something difficult is coming up. He just does some turns and lifts way up in the air. And none of the judges gave A plus five. One judge gave only plus one grade of execution. Hanyu offered another perspective beside the corruption theory in his thesis though. There's the fatigue factor, the confusing rule changes every year factor, the limitation of the judges factor, with the increasing difficulty of jumps being executed it became clearer that the judges couldn't even tell the right or wrong technique anymore. While Hanyu was trying hard to do justification for the judges, spectators couldn't help but notice the judging bias over the past few years. It's so prominent that in the latest Russian nationals, the skaters under Team Tutberids have all gotten boosted scores compared to the rest of the field. That, together with other issues like the nationalistic bias, the block voting etc., the sport is slowly losing its credibility among fans. There is at least one basic reform that many people want to see happen. A zero-tolerance policy for judges who have been caught cheating. The ISU sanctions judges who act improperly, but said it has never banned a judge for life. Have you ever heard of a bank, for example, taking back someone who embezzled money? That is a major problem. Honestly, without addressing the root cause of the subjective system, Spectators aren't sure if giving such high power to the judges in influencing the scores is a good thing. All it takes is for two to three judges to gang up and we will have another corrupted game fixing scandal lying ahead of us. Alright, that's it for our video today. Don't forget to leave a comment and let us know what do you think. Remember to subscribe and share it with your friends. Thank you.